calling the meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. The first order of business is the minutes. Uh, are there any corrections, comments, changes? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to accept the minutes as printed. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Minutes are uh, adopted. Okay. Um, Charlie's downstairs uh, making up capital revisions for the, the ones he sent out today because uh, I think it's complex enough they'd like to see a hard copy. I, know, I don't know how many people had a chance to actually print that up. But. So what I think I'd like to do, we've got one re-vote I'd like to make on Minuteman. And we voted 4,284,583. Is that right, Peter? And that was the number that was in the long range plan, and that was the number we got, I, I thought that he was focusing on. But when I opened, I went back in and I opened this up, Sandy caught it, is there's another $6,750 for post-grad post adjustment. Uh, so it's not a lot of money. But so the correct number should be 4,291,333. Four million two nine one three three three. So it's just that extra small piece that we needed to add back in or add in. Uh, any questions? Okay, we well, have a motion. What was it called? Now? Post grad assessment. Three thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars a student. So obviously it must have been two students. Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, second? Second. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor of 4,291,333 for Minuteman, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, let me discuss it without uh, Charlie here. Uh, well, let's take a look at the uh, reserve fund transfers. Okay, so Sandy, do you want to go through these sort of one by one? Sure. Um, there are two of them there. The first one is uh, the HVAC system at the Audison Middle School. Um, this has been failing, and I'm told by Ruthie Bennett and Kathy Bodie that it will not make it through next winter. They have contracted to uh, replace it. There's in your handout a copy of the contract that they have signed that is they're just waiting to move forward on. They've, in fact, put a deposit down on, but the full contract is pending uh, full funding, which this request is for, for $250,000. Uh, uh, and I don't have my memo in front of me. So uh, we think that there will be about $9,950 uh, in rebates from Eversource for some of the equipment that's going in. But uh, they tell me that they really need this and get going on it so that it can <coughs> place so when school starts up next year. Uh, the second is a... Uh, well, let's, let's oh, take okay, them one sorry. at a time. Sure. Okay, so the request is for two fifty five ninety five. dollars Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe the superintendent mentioned this when she came in, when the school department was here. Uh, any questions for the... I was about to say town manager, but I didn't want to promote you. But for the... Uh, for Sandy. Okay, do I have a motion? Okay, uh, second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded for 250595. Any further discussion? 
Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Okay, unanimous. To the schools. Yeah, oh. Rich, Rich, pardon me if I may, Mr. Sure. Uh, Rich Biscay has set up a, uh, I guess what I'd call a capital account. Um, so once it's spent, the, that will close back out the free cash when it's done. So it's not part of the school operating budget, but a separate capital item for this particular project. Okay, so, uh, so it's a transfer to the schools? Uh, yes, and in, in, in a capital account for the school department. <coughs> okay. Okay, law department settlement? Um, this, it comes about because of a um, negligence suit that was filed against the police department uh, because of a uh, wrongful death claim. Um, it, the total settlement amount is $75,000. The law department has uh, $50,000 of that in other settlements accounts or its own budget. This would give them the last $25,000 they need to, to settle this. Um, again, I want to emphasize that it was a, um, a negligence claim. It was not an issue of police doing something to this guy. Um, but his family alleged that they, they should have done more uh, to prevent what turned out, unfortunately, to be this fellow's death. Um, Questions? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All those, uh, any further discussion? Okay. So. The motion has been made to second for uh, $25,000 for this uh, settlement uh, to be transferred, I assume, to legal department. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's on the transfer form that's attached here. Right, right here. Do we have a tra uh, yeah. transfer form for the uh, schools? I did not just because I couldn't get Kathy Bodie to sign one today. Because, so, but I can tell you the account number it's going into, if that's helpful, because I have that from Rich Biscay. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Did we just vote that? Yes. Okay. Here. Unanimous. If that is the, if that's the account for the Odyssey, if that's helpful to you. Just have the amount in it? No, that's the two, that's just so you know where it's going. Okay, it is now in your park. Thank you, sir. Okay, reserve fund transfers are done. A question oh. now? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I assume there's going to be a special election, actually two special elections to replace Senator Donnelly. Um, ah, good question. Do we know when those will be? Will the primary be this fiscal year, perhaps, or? When is the next state election? Not, not, not until, until 2018. It's a year from now. Have you heard anything? I have not heard anything about I, that. Uh, I think, excuse me, I think it's a little too early yet. They're going to call it, but you could have as many as four elections. Well, you'll have. Depends upon who runs. Two more for uh, you'll have a primary and a final. 
and you could have another primary final depending upon who runs it. Who so chooses to run? Takes, gets the line, oh, you know, right. So you could have four. Okay. Well, we'll if uh, who is the town clerk's budget? Peter. Yes. Oh, and the selectman. Could you uh, check with the selectman's office and see what plans they have? If, if, if I will. I, I'm, if the state will notify them on that, but I, I'll, I'll check. With I'll okay, check. just Could touch bases with it. Because it, it's probably in flux right now, depending upon the, if they haven't announced it, so no one has come forward to say they're running or not. But, yeah. Um, I'll keep you ahead of them. Gene, if you're born with, bored with treasurer, you can run for state senator. <laughs> okay, uh, reserve funds are done. Minuteman's done. Minutes are done. Charlie, are you ready? Yes. By the way, I trust everybody has noticed black oh, yeah. behind you, Charlie. Oh, wow. Same thing. Same thing. Got it back. Or, or is it one? A new one. one. I'm assuming a new one. Yeah. So this is about time we'll find the old one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so everybody got the handout? Mr. Poskett. Thank you. So, first of all, I want to apologize. I promised uh, that we'd have the capital vote ready for this meeting, but we don't have it ready yet. <clears throat> We're a little bit stymied for because of some uh, lack of final inputs. Um, so, a number of things have happened since we did the capital planning presentation here on March 8th. Uh, <clears throat> on March 12th, and I can't recall whether we discussed this at an earlier finance committee meeting or not, but on March 12th, um, uh, Adam and Sandy informed Al and I that the gift project was coming in at roughly a million dollars over the, co the prior uh, estimated cost. And as you may recall, the gift project is uh, debt excluded, and the uh, so the amount of uh, money that can be spent on the debt exclusion is through a complicated matter, which we don't need to discuss tonight constrained by the vote, uh, even though there's no number in the vote. Uh, <clears throat> so um, I have a little, little write-up here on the, the details of the background. The original uh, estimate for the project was uh, 25 million. The town hired the, uh, the architect and the uh, construction manager at risk. They came back with a number um, that the town manager thinks is going to be pretty close to uh, 27 million. So. It's really over uh, about a million dollars over the original estimate <coughs> because the uh, DOR has said that they would allow the uh, inf effective inflation to raise the original debt exclusion for, uh, cap by about eight or nine hundred thousand dollars. So uh, at the time, uh, Al and I agreed with the town manager and deputy town manager that the um, non-exempt capital budget could handle that, even even though at the time it wasn't in it. And um, it, tur it turns out that we had a num number of uh, mechanisms to do that. Secondly, uh, a piece of good news is that since that time, the town has also learned that it's got a $500,000 municipal grant to um, undertake the reconstruction of the Mystic Street uh, Bridge over Millbrook. Um, <coughs> so that's the good news. So the, the negative news, if you will, is that we had this in the, in the capital plan in um, 2021 and 2022, it, it, it anticipating that we were going to be spending uh, chunks of cash at that time. But the total project cost is $1.6 million, and um, 
we have to have matching funds. The town has to have matching funds ready in order to get the grant. So we, we have to put a uh, bond in the um, capital plan for fiscal year uh, 2019 for about 1.1 million. It'll be a 20 or a 30 year bond in, um, to, to, to come up with the matching funds uh, on a timely basis for the state. The, um, the, the debt service will probably be between uh, 65 and, and uh, 80 thousand um, dollars. So the um, that's the amount that we'll have to come up with per year for the last three years, and then and a smaller amount uh, for the first year of the bond because we only have to come up with half the interest cost. And the third. Uh, piece of news is that this, the Stratton project is coming in substantially under budget, and I I owe um, I should give credit to uh, Sandy for, for these uh, some of these uh, spreadsheet charts here. But very simply, that uh, on a, under item number three, the uh, original project cost was fifteen million seven hundred ninety-three thousand, and you, you may remember from the from the October. Special town meeting was that? I can't remember what it was. was that October? Yeah. yeah. The October special town meeting, we um, funded it from a variety of different sources. Uh, basically, the project's coming in about a million and a half dollars under the forecast. Um, Five hundred thousand dollars of that has been borrowed and is sitting in an account someplace. And then and there's a million dollars that was voted as bond authorization, but has not been. Borrowed yet? So what we're, what we're actually talking about here is is capacity for the uh, non-exempt capital plan in some fashion or another, and the and the exact fashion is the reason why we're not ready to make a you know precise recommended form vote. But the the beneficial uh, impact here, um, the the uh, if you take the uh, if you look at the sources of money. Uh, down below, uh, you, you can see that we have um, about a million, 1.2 million dollars uh, in uh, surplus. The sources are listed there, the permanent financing of uh, bands, and then uh, an earlier bond. And then the town is uh, between a premium and direct borrowing, got about 8.747 million that is exempt um, borrowing. Um, we we also voted at the time for a capital carry forward of uh, 1.642 million from other accounts that had leftover funds, and then uh, finally this is, uh, the sale of the uh, DAV building for $750,000. You uh, just turn to the next page. Uh, now this is where it gets a little fuzzy because um, I. I the, the reason this note came out late is I was wondering if we can, can get an email today from bond, from Sandy on Bond Council, but I guess we have or haven't, I don't know. I didn't see anything. We did. Uh, I have had a couple of emails and a couple of conversations, and I have one more question to Bond Council that I'm waiting for an answer on. Okay. So we're getting very close. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, one, one, one way to think about this is the, uh, uh, the total project cost is the 14293 uh, less the exempt portion uh, leaves 5.546 million. And if we were to reduce the uh, capital carry forward to 392,000, and there's some question there, a couple of questions there as to whether we can approach the payment scheme in this way or not, then um, that would leave the uh, uh, 5.1454 million. And we've already got 4.4 million in uh, non exempt. Uh, bans and bonds, uh, and that leaves the project balance of 750000 which is covered by the sale of the DAV bill. And so we recover from this whole project about $1.25 million. Um, <clears throat> so what, the, what we in principle propose is that the $1 million of the surplus of the recovery be used to fund the Gibbs, and uh, 250000 is used to fund the Mystic Street Bridge debt service from uh, fiscal year 2019 through 22. Um, 
the exact mechanism and how we put that into words and get that voted by town meeting has yet to be determined. And that's why uh, we don't have a vote in front of you tonight. So compared to the capital uh, presentation on uh, March 8th, we, we have uh, three fundamental changes. First, the cost of the Gibbs has gone up by a million dollars, and, and we're recommending that be borne by the non-exempt capital budget. Secondly, um, we want to accelerate the borrowing uh, for the expenditures on the Mystic Street Bridge in order to have funds for the matching grant, uh, matching grant requirement, uh, matching fund requirements for the state grant of five hundred thousand dollars. And uh, finally, we have um, the Stratton School project coming in under budget uh, for some. Um, um, from, I, I would say probably reasons of good management by the Permanent Town Building Committee by a, a, an amount of approximately 1.5 million. Now you may be intellectually curious as to why we talk about a 1.5 million dollar um, project being under budget in the um, recovered, uh, the possibility of savings is only 1.25 million dollars. And, and that's because uh, in the original proposal town meeting, we were anticipating a $1 million income from the sale of the DAV building, and that came in at $750,000. So you can't save money that you didn't capture in the first place, and that's the reason for that $250,000 difference. So um, in terms of the capital budget being within the 5% plan and being balanced this year and so forth, I think we're in very good shape in that regard. We have three or four methods of getting there. We're just waiting for some guidance from um, from Bond Council. Um, and the uh, and once we have that, we can, we can put together the vote, which will be substantially in the same form as prior votes that you've seen uh, for capital <coughs> projects, except that um, we will be doing two things slightly differently this year. One, we will have um, some language that has been recommended by the Treasurer's Department with respect to um, the Municipal Modernization Act and how we handle um, premiums and, and related issues. And secondly, we are going to be more explicit in including um, debt service for the enterprise uh, uh, debt service. We've, we've had them sort of bundled in a, a number recently, and, and in the last several years, we're going to be a little bit more explicit in the way we present that. But but nothing uh, different than those those two items. So um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, we have Sandy and uh, Dean here, so I'm sure we can answer all the questions and get all the questions answered. Okay, so you've got three changes. The Stratton is producing a 1.25 million dollar surplus to use a million dollars towards the Gibbs to eliminate that, and 250000 towards the Mystic Street Bridge. Yes. So that's the per general parameters of what you're doing. Yeah, but the 250000 is for debt service. Right, but it, yeah. it's debt service on the yeah. on the bridge. That's what we think we're doing. At least that's what I'm recommending. I don't okay. know if that's what we're doing about it. Maybe Sandy or Dean has additional comments from their discussions today. OK, Sandy, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I would just say uh, it is complicated, um, and so this is an outline, but it may change. So don't don't put all your eggs in that basket. I think the, the details will change, but the fundamentals are correct. It's Charlie has explained them that because we have uh, resources from some savings and other projects that are more expensive than were originally uh, anticipated. We will be moving some stuff around, but at the, at the end, we'll be able to fund these projects and stay within our 5%. Right, and I, and I think it's important to realize that we, we also had the, we had the million dollars funded for the Gibbs in a different manner. And by in bringing this surplus into the capital budget, what we're, what we're actually doing is creating um, downstream capacity for the capital, for the non exempt capital budget. Because you're paying cash now as opposed yeah, to long term. Exactly. Okay. We're paying. We're paying using prior authorized money. Yeah. As opposed to new ones. Questions, uh, Paul and Bill. And so why are we?
talking about the Mystic Street Bridge project now and it doesn't actually take effect now until this year? Well, you know, we have a five year plan, right? Okay. okay. And, and in the, the Mystic Street Bridge was in the five year plan in fiscal years 2021 and 22, the last two years of the plan. And, and because of uh, our interest in absorbing some premiums and things like that, we had this as a cash expenditure that was going to be spread over a couple of years. So now, when the, I, I don't know, I think maybe that the, the, the near term award of this grant was a pleasant surprise for the town, that money has, is going to come in next year. It's, it's not going to be able to be spent in fiscal. We already have authorized a uh, million or two million dollars, I can't remember. We've authorized money for the planning of this uh, project in, in a prior capital budget. And that work is underway. So they can't actually do the work until fiscal year 2019. But we still have to put the project in the fiscal year 2019 to satisfy the practice of capital planning. So it doesn't actually affect the vote since we don't vote on the you know, town meeting, the town meeting votes, because the town meeting doesn't vote on the plan, they only vote on the fiscal well, 18 budget. Uh, yes, that you, we, we always do say that, that you're not voting on the plan, you're just voting on the budget. But, you know, they're sort of magically tied together through debt service. Is there a, a deadline when you have to you spend the 500000 or you lose it? I don't know the answer to that. Um, there, that get, <laughs> that's a dealing with the state again it gets a little complicated because usually they have a one year rule but they also put out when they gave out the grant some indication about when you have to have your design in and so forth and the schedule they gave us for that would make it impossible for you to spend it within a year so Mike Rademacher and I have had this conversation a couple of times he thinks that uh, they'll give us two years to spend the money Okay, so it's something we have to move along on. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bill? I was just going to say this. So in, in any case, um, we have to, to spend the money. At one point, we have to spend that money. It's just a question that will be a debt service by doing it earlier rather than later. And in return for that, uh, <coughs> we receive a $500,000 grant from the state. So that's pretty good economics. Good. Pretty fair deal, I think. Oh, yeah, it is a big deal. I mean, the, the total cost of the project after the uh, planning was estimated at $1.6 million. So that's almost 30% of the savings. Okay, other questions? Right, Darrell, Charlie, and a question about the $250,000 the being used uh, from the bridge. Is that $250,000 of that from the capital surplus? Um, in, in principle, <clears throat> in principle, um, when when a, this is part of the reason this is complicated is because a million of the dollars hasn't been a million of the 1.5 drop has not been borrowed, and 500 thousand dollars has been borrowed. Right. Okay. But tr tr let's assume that all the money was borrowed, then we would have this pot of money sitting in the in the account somewhere, and what we would normally do is we put in what we call a capital carry forward account. And then with the <coughs> support of the treasurer and the uh, comptroller, we, we withdraw that on some schedule or at some times in order to balance out the capital budget. That's how we so <coughs> meet. And um, so the, the, what, I, what I'm saying here is that a use for that, since the, since the debt service in 2021 20, and 22 is going to be somewhere depending upon interest rates and term, somewhere between sixty and $80,000 probably. Mm -hmm. um, you could take those three principal payments out of that 250000 and have money left over to fund the interest in fiscal year 2000. Okay. The, the reason I'm asking is it, lo it looks, maybe it's just the, <coughs> me in the context of my prior life with state capital, um, is it looks like we're using one pot of capital money Pay basically another capital debt service. We are. With, with the but state, we, I don't think we would have been allowed no, to. No, we are allowed to do that within certain constraints. And I have to tell you that I'm, I'm not as familiar with the constraints now as I used to be because of the, 
of the Municipal Modernization Act. But it used to be, if it was cash, we uh, take an this year's tax money, you could, and you held it over, you could spend it on any any project and in any either debt or any type of project. However, if it was borrowed, it used to be that, you, if, for example, it was a school building or a fire truck, right? You could only spend it on another truck or spend it on another school building or something like that. They had typical uh, Section 44 has all these categories of debt, and you had to spend within those categories as they were originally voted. I don't know what it's, it's more liberal now, I believe, right? It's they squished a lot of the categories into one big category. So you and you're basically now limited to looking at useful life and borrowing, reappropriating for something with a similar useful life. Okay, I mean, my only, my only, it looks like we're essentially using proceeds from one bond issuance to pay the debt service on another bond yeah, issuance. Well, but that's more or less the case, but it, it only gets done with a vote of town meeting. It's not It's not because the finance committee says it, right. the, yeah. it has to be in vote, which is why we don't have the vote, because we don't know how to write that okay. down. Other questions? Yeah. Alan? The, uh, the 650000 in the plan for fiscal year 21 and 22, was that meant to be the, the full cost, or was that assuming a grant of some sort? Uh, it was assuming that we'd, we'd get a grant, and we were also assuming that, that there was another year of expenditure outside of that year. Okay, other questions? Now, there's two ways we could handle this. Uh, one of them uh, would be just an endorsement of the changes that uh, that Charlie <coughs> and Sandy want to make in the capital plan. And, and the treasurer and the comptroller. Yep, the whole four of you, uh, to go ahead and make the changes necessary within certain parameters that, uh, that you've spoken to us. And uh, when you get it all to bed, send it in and we'll go to print. Uh, the other way to do this is to come back next Wednesday uh, when we have some of these maybe some of these questions answered, might or might not, uh, and go through the process again. So, what would you, uh, okay, Paul? Well, we can also go to print with some kind of comment that we have to do a final vote that we will make, you know, um, at, during one of the 730 meetings before town meeting. We'll, we'll report. Uh, that's true, we could do a little report at town meeting. Is sort of the third option. Uh, it's your budget. Do you have any particular feelings one way or the other? Uh, well, we okay. will have the final form of the budget by the time the, cap the finance committee print goes to print. Yeah, which should be probably next Tuesday, would be my guess. Yeah, I think. Or Wednesday. Will we have the answers this week from? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yes, we will. Okay, so so we'll have a vote done up over the weekend. And um, as Sandy said, I, I mean, I don't think the numbers are going to. The end effect here is not going to be any different than, than what we just discussed. So it's really a question of complying with IRS rules and the Municipal yep. Modernization Act. Okay. Any other questions? So. Uh, so we've got three options. One is to vote to support <coughs> the Capital Budget Committee Manager's Office uh, Treasurer and Controller in organizing this in the parameters that the Chairman has said uh, and approve it, even though we know some of the details might change a little bit. Um, a second one is to come back next Wednesday. A third one will be, we'll report at town meeting, uh, in which case we could take a final uh, blessing on it maybe the first night of town meeting and uh, uh, go from there. Bill? Well, I would vote for a, a Paul's idea that if, you know, everything in philosophy is, uh, I think we agree on, but it would be nice to see the actual format and the numbers one more time before it goes to town meeting. So that may be something we could just rubber stamp the meeting before the town meeting, having discussed it tonight yeah. Well, I think, you know, considering all the changes that have happened, if you want to, you know, do a rule report at this time, and then, uh, uh, you know, we could take a, a, a final vote on the numbers uh, the first Monday of town meeting and go from there. 
you know, that's fine. Carolyn, then Paul. Well, I was going to move the one that the most will get the most likely no votes, and then we can move on to the other two. So I would like to move that we accept um, it as is, um, and that you all will take care of it behind the scenes. Anyone second? Second. And the, I'm going to abstain on the vote, so because I don't know what I'm talking about. But the rest of you can decide <laughs> what we're going to do. So it happens when you come in late. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the motion is made to accept the changes as recommended by the chairman of the Capital Budget Committee, uh, understanding that there could be some minor modifications as they get towards final printing. So that's been made and seconded. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of that motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? One, two. And one abstain. Okay, so uh, go forth. I think Peter asked for a confirmation of the vote. Uh, ten yes, two no, one abstain. Okay, now uh, Thank you. capital revisions. Uh, j just to let you know the timing on the finance committee report, uh, the selectmen went out. I think, to print today, uh, not to print, to, to mail all of the various reports from Redevelopment Board and such. And uh, I, I talked to the Selectman's office on Monday. There was just no way we were going to get things ready for them on this afternoon. Uh, so I told them to just go ahead and send it out. Last year uh, was the first time since I've been chairman that we actually sent the Finance Committee report out with the Selectman's report. I guess. That'll be the high point. <laughs> uh, Same on postage. Yeah, that's true. So we're going to uh, probably, Alan and I and Sandy are still wrapping up the little numbers, uh, but we're pretty close. We uh, need to do a couple votes tonight. And then, uh, so we'll probably go to print Monday or Tuesday, or Tuesday or Wednesday, actually. One of the big problems is set Friday's a holiday and Monday's a holiday. So I, that's why the selectmen wanted to get it out. Uh, and 75 of the people don't want a hard copy anyway. So uh, um, 75, of the town 75 town meeting members don't want a hard copy. So actually, Liz, we should talk about that because that could, that could save some money. Uh, so, so that's what we're hoping to get done. So, so it's going to be available first time town meeting, is that the plan now? Yeah, it, it'll, uh, uh, Alan will. It, it, it'll be available on the website and through the town meeting list probably Thursday. But hard copy will be available at the first night of town meeting, which is how we've done it for like 20 years. So, because uh, we never get to our budgets for a couple of weeks. Uh, parking. Okay, so uh, it's been a lot of, of back and forth and discussion on the parking article 39. So, uh, what I tried to do, talking and listening, was put together a motion. Uh, for your consideration, and that's uh, that was handed out, titled Article 39, uh, and uh, what I basically did was try to keep it simple, and that is uh, my understanding from talking with Sandy is that all of the violation money and the permit money goes into the general fund. This is the meter money. So that 425,000 up top is the meter money for the new street meters plus the two meters uh, in the two parking lots. The uh, manager is recommending the offset to parking th uh, budget 13, 45,000, offset to parking enforcement police of 56,000, and then the parking meter operations of 172, 479, projected expenditures. So this vote would basically have town meeting approve those expenditures. Uh, and that leaves an available balance of the 150 uh, for a future town meeting. 
Um, and then hopefully you've read the comment. Um, I, I talked with the town council. I talked with the town moderator. There's no articles that we could do this with at this in this warrant. <coughs> so um, if uh, if the finance committee goes this way, I and and supports the general concept, we will look to put a bylaw or other mechanism uh, at the next town meeting, which will probably be in November, uh, that will spell out the process. So this goes through the town meeting process and gets approved, just like the budgets, just like the revolving funds, just like the enterprise funds, and just like the Warren articles. Uh, so it's all transparent. So that was my shot at it. Uh, I'd like to put it before you and open the meeting for discussion. OK, Peter? I think this is excellent. I recommend it. I move it. OK, motion's been made. Um, OK, second. Uh, discussion, Paul. If Article 26 passes, then a parking district will be set up. Doesn't that mean that all the money goes into the parking district, no matter what we do on Article 39? My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Sandy, is these monies don't go to the parking district. These monies go into the parking fund that was created at the uh, special town meeting last October. It would only go into the parking district. First of all, we've got to create a district, which will not be in effect until sometime next September, because remember, it's got to go through attorney general. And the manager has promised that you know no monies will be expended for the parking district until town meeting approves it. And that will be the purpose next fall of creating the process whereby town meeting approves uh, the offsets, the operations, and if it so chooses, money for the district. The, as soon as the parking district is created, assuming 26 passes and goes through, gets approved by Attorney General, as soon as the parking district is created, don't the parking revenues go into the parking district? Sandy? <laughs> Um, the parking, just to be clear, the parking revenues now uh, go into the parking fund that was established at town meeting last October. Once the parking district is created, then uh, yes, I think what will happen is that we can say that the parking district can make use of the funds in that parking fund to carry out the operations of the parking district. So they will have access. The, the district and basically Pig City will have access to make recommendations for how to use those funds. So the money will always going forward go into the parking fund. And that was what the vote was last fall. And so even if the parking district is set up, that stays. That will stay going forward, it will go into the parking fund, and it's the, the parking district then will be spending money from the fund. Okay, but the town manager has promised that no money would be spent. Yes, no, that, that's right. Uh, but just to answer the very technical question, right. I'm nodding to that. <laughs> right. Yes, I guess, but my whole point was, can we even approve these expenditures uh, if, if the money were to go to the parking district instead of the parking fund we wouldn't even be able to approve these expenditures but since you're saying the money will still go to the parking fund then yes we can approve these expenditures okay other discussion so Darrell? the the proposed bylaw that would be acted upon by some future town meeting would essentially memorialize the agreement by the town manager not to spend those funds, correct? Yeah, that's my that's without, the intent of this in the comment. Alan? Um, I, and I also I, I, I uh, you know, recommend approval of the, of the language because to some extent it, it uh, delays the 
obligation of that hundred fifty thousand dollars. And I, not that I have lack of confidence in the careful studies went into the forecasting, but I'm not sure that uh, there isn't some room for motion in the projected revenues and expenses. I mean, there's going to be some slop and psychology changes and people park on streets without meters and whatever. We're not really sure what those numbers are going to be. So this gives us a year's experience before we start encumbering a certain amount. So, I mean, right now, with the, with the, the statutes, the money goes into the fund and then just gets spent without appropriation. You know, town meeting has no say. And I think town finance committee has always taken the position that town meeting should approve, you know, all, all expenditures, or at least as many expenditures as we can. So, again, that, that's the purpose. Okay, other, other discussion, questions, Peter? I have a question about the uh, selectmen uh, establishing the district. Um, how, will that be a detailed description? Yeah similar to the diagram that you provided how, how do they go about doing that? Uh, the statute is vague about that. It doesn't lay out a procedure. However, uh, I believe from talking to Adam and uh, the planning staff and the people from Pixie who have been involved in this, that that's exactly what the selectmen will do is once they, if Article 26 passes and gives them the authority to establish a district, then they will set one out and memorialize it in a map like this. Or the map, or will be text on it, this street to that street, to another street to the corner of so and so, and big tree and so forth. You know that that I, I don't know because we're I know in my experience in other communities where uh, they've laid out parking. They've authorized parking in, in language meters. You know, the parking rules are such and such for this road and that road and so forth. I, I frankly don't know well enough how Arlington has done that in the past, but whether it's language or a map, I think uh, they could do it either way. And I'm sure if you had a view on what would be clearer to the public, they would listen. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? This isn't directly related, but looking down the road a little bit, what what would we anticipate happening if meters go up in Capitol Square or in Arlington Heights? How, uh, different districts and different... So I tried to address that, and I don't know if you had a chance to read the, the memo that I wrote, but, uh, and I think Laura Wiener is on her way, but uh, and, uh, what she's told me is that each part of the town is unique. And <coughs> One of the things about Arlington Center is we have big parking lots there. So, you know, the whole point of the meters is not raising revenue. The whole point of the meters is regulating parking so that you want to encourage people to park some places and not others, or if they're doing it for long periods of time. So we charge lower rates for parking in the lots and higher rates for parking on the streets. And we can do that in Arlington Center because there are lots. In East Arlington, there are no lots. The big problem there is that some people are parking um, there to commute and go to Alewife and so forth. And what they tell me is their discussions about parking in that part of town has been if you <coughs> were to put meters on Mass Ave, it would effectively drive people into the residential streets. And so, you know, that is not, that's going in the wrong direction. So uh, I don't think that they are uh, looking toward putting meters there. It's a similar situation in the Heights in that there is one very small municipal lot that's right next to the Sunrise assisted living facility there. But it's, it's a, I, don't, I think probably most people don't even know that there's a lot there. Right. Um, but it's again, it's the same thing. If you were to put meters in the Heights, you would then drive people out of the business district to get into the residential neighborhoods. Well, there really isn't residential between say Park Ave and, and, and Paul Revere. There aren't any cross streets there, so it's a little different. Well, yeah. On the other side of the street, however, uh, that's exactly what's happening. Well, right. The, the, the people are, instead of parking on Mass Avenue, are parking on Jason Street. Which is, uh, it all goes to the issue that what they tell me is in all their discussions about how to regulate parking, putting meters in either of those parts of town is not an effective solution. And I guess from what Pete said, you know, again, I, 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 it'll be interesting to see how the uh, actuals 
uh, match the, the projections that have been made. Right. Well, okay. in that case, what about the parking stickers, like cameras and so on yeah. that they have? <coughs> would that solve the problem? That might. I think it's way beyond the issue of a parking. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a huge conversation. Um, that, and there are multiple ways to try to, to deal with infringement on residential parking. Well, oh, can I come sure. in? Well, so, so I went to the um, last meeting of the a committee. I was sitting there, and the one thing, I, I said, what Sandy said, it repeats what the nice woman from the planning department said. She had this really like, well thought out rationale behind things. Or everything she said, actually. But one other thing she said, because the question came up about adding meters into the Heights or adding meters into East Arlington, and what, what she pointed out almost immediately was the decision to put meters in Arlington Center was it was a conclusion based after a long period of studying and research and, and, and things like that. And she, she said it was a multi-year process by the planning department. And then they haven't even started looking at... Um, at either East Arlington or the Heights for any expansion. So my sort of take from, from her reaction to that, so I might even have brought it up, was um, you know, they go through a professional process to reach a conclusion and to, and to even entertain the thought of it without any research or analysis is just sort of reckless speculation on their part that it would work or not. And so I think th their thoughts, at least in the planning department, where they have a process and they need to go through the process and it would take one, two, or three years to come to a conclusion based on the, the information that they have or the analysis that they do. So I think it's easier for us to just sort of say, hey, what about going here? What about going here? But for them, I thought they were very, she was very cautious in saying, well, we haven't done any work. We couldn't opine on that at this point. Any other questions or discussion? David? I just want to mention, going back to Peter's question, uh, I don't think most people realize that we have a, a town bylaw book and we also have, that puts from the Board of Selectmen, the Traffic Rules and Orders book. Now, I haven't seen one in, in a long time, but it's, um, and any, <clears throat> any parking signs, drop sign, parking district, loading zone, it's all supposed to be in that book. It's under different sections. <coughs> so I'm sure when, when they develop this parking district, it's gotta be in that, in, in, I, I, I say book, it could be as, as big as this now, I, I don't know. Um, but it comes under, uh, under the Board of Selectmen because they are the parking commissioners. So there is a book called The Traffic Rules and Orders of the Town. Um, everything that, every sign you see ha has to be listed in, the, in that book. No, no, uh, no turn on red, your traffic signals, you, you name it. Obtaining the traffic is in that book, so I'm sure the district, would, the new uh, parking district would, would be in that book as well. <coughs> okay, any other discussion or questions? Okay, motion's been made and accept, uh, seconded uh, to um, support the voted motion under Article 39. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 4, 12. Okay, that's done. Okay, so the final amount uh, we, we, by the way, when we got the local aid from the House Ways and Means Committee, we did get a nudge up. We thought we were going to get a bigger nudge up until you took a look at assessments, and then we got a nudge down. So, but we are getting a little bit more money. So uh, I think the committee, uh, from prior discussions, <coughs> would like to perhaps, well, first of all, how much money is the surplus, Alan? Right. Well, 491, so on. Four nine one. Without putting any money in those things. Okay, four nine one seven nine three. Uh, Chris, Christine, how? In order, if I remember correctly, the last time you looked at it, you were like we were at seventy three percent of the past ten years. You were going to update the ten years to include this year. This year. And so, so how much do we need to get to seventy five percent? How much do we need to get to eighty percent? Year average is one million four hundred twenty-five thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars. Okay, I'm sorry, Christine. The ten-year average is the ten-year average is one million four hundred twenty-five thousand eight eighty-six. 
So 75% of that is 1,069,414. And we would have to add 123,414 to the 2018 budget request to get to 75%. I'm sorry, could you repeat that one? Uh, we have to. The budget request right now for 2018 is 946, 946,000. To get to the 75 percent mark, we would have to add 123,414 to that. 123,404. 414. 414. How about you get to 80 percent? Would need 194708. 194708. Uh, okay, so if we add 123,414 to the current budget, which has already been voted, we will be at 75% of the 10 year average. If we add 194,708, we will be at 80% of the 10 year average. What is the wish of the FinCom? Sorry? I move 80%. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to add $194,708 to the uh, snow and ice budget to bring it up of 80% of uh, 10 year average. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous. One nine four seven zero eight. Snow and ice. Addition. Addition. Okay. Five hundred. And the balance. We could have a motion. The balance into the override stabilization fund. Okay. Well, I think going forward in future years, 80% sounds like a good number to maintain going forward. But we don't want to we don't want to spend put it at 100% because that sort of takes away money from um, good uses uh, in years when it doesn't snow that much. Yep. So I, I hope that going forward, 80% okay. is the number. We go if forward. the Finance Committee agrees, I think Christine has her marching orders <laughs> and the manager's office. Okay, so um, can I have a motion to put, oh, it's already been made and seconded, uh, to put the balance of the funds, whatever it is, about 300000 into the override stabilization fund. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Action. Peter or Alan, do we have any other? Have we missed anything? Not that I know. Did you okay. Not Article 26. I'm sorry? Article 26, did you not know? Nobody's made a motion to do that. Let the selectmen handle it. Okay, just check it. Um, okay, Paul? Just so that number that we just voted for the override stabilization fund, how does that compare with the number that was in the original five-year plan at the beginning of our budget process? There, which five-year plan? Yeah, it's it's, it's the, roughly the same. The, the, the February 1st or whatever, though. Well, I, I'm looking at the March 17th, and that was uh, 368000 so this is about 300,000 and change. Uh, and if Alan and I find any little odds and ends 
we'll dump it in there too. So uh, it's it's in the range. But part of that, we we took a chunk of that and put it into snow and ice, effectively. So right. uh, that's why uh, we, we did we did fine. And yeah, it could have been higher. But okay, is there any other uh, business before the meeting? Okay, meeting adjourned. So our next meeting is okay. Our next meeting is the Monday. Do we do the, they don't do those uh, uh, state of the t at seven o'clock anymore? Do they? No, that, that happens during the, during the town meeting. Itself. Okay, so the next meeting is uh, is April twenty fourth at seven thirty in the uh, Lions Room at the town hall. Dick. Yeah, and I can do twenty six. April twenty six. Yeah, uh, twenty six. Bob, that's up to the finance committee. Okay. So yes. the selectmen have a motion. They've recommended favorable mm -hmm. action. Uh, and how about the transfers from uh, year end transfers? Do you want to say those? To well, I think we just you, you did we did the, the transfers. The, the, yeah. Peter, did we vote the transfers? The, yes, the two that. Uh, yeah. 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 Everybody else is apparently within budget. Is that right? Well, the uh, you. No, I mean, I assume we're going to have a meeting in June to clear up any end of year transfers. Right. We will, ha we will have our half hour meetings before each town meeting, and we will have a meeting sometime in uh, early to mid June uh, to do reserve fund transfers and reorganization. And uh, maybe a little after that, we'll, have, we'll worry about our uh, wrap up dinner. Any other business? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you all for your work.